but I counted 11 out of the 23 teams there. Four, that's 48%. 48% Crazy. were wow. coached by the same coach. I see that, Do you like, think it would be possible for them to switch jackets? I actually think it would be impossible. The French still won the technical by like three points, but like, like the Russians won the difficulty like of the elements, I guess, in base yeah. value. Yeah, I was but like, still- who designed this? I was like, that's a near close to Vera Wang doing the Cheeto costume for Nathan. Right, so today's episode is what happened at the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Ice Dance event. All right, so to kick off this this segment, um, I I was watching ice dance and I was trying to actually physically count how many of those teams that were sent to the Olympics that were coached by the Montreal Dance School ran by Marie France and Pat or Patrice or whatever you call her husband's <laughs> name. Um, but I counted 11 out of the 23 teams there. Four, that's 48%. 48% Crazy. were wow. coached by the same co- I swear to god like they totally just gave up you know how like sometimes when coaches coach multiple teams they will switch like warm up jackets in between in the kiss and cry mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they were just they like they just didn't they were like nope, no <laughs> no let, let, let me just wear black and just be neutral <laughs> the and, classic yeah yeah and you could see that, do you think like, it would be possible for them to switch jackets i actually think it would be impossible they have to bring a <laughs> luggage with all of their team jackets you would see like oh marie france would go help that team while patrice was getting the other team ready so it was it was interesting do you think do you think like how did they come to that selection in the first place there are actually three main heads so marie romaine and pat so and- I, I think they each have one kind of like figure who is the Mm. one in charge of teams in a geographical region which makes sense because when you go to competitions like europeans are four continents it's Mm -hmm. within that geographic region i love how they have a global strategy (laughs) yes (laughs) it's literally global domination (laughs) i feel like marie like marie france wears the pants in this whole like coaching team absolutely (laughs) (laughs) i just feel like i almost like i feel like she's in charge of like the most important skaters in my opinion so i i mean but she gives all she gives all the boss woman vibes so good for her all the um, i think someone on a on twitter made like a <laughs> like a dating guide for who's dating ding, of who's dating who and i stands because it, it i feel like they just all train at the same place so people are just bound to you know i guess get with each other um but like one of the most I guess uh publicly talked about one is Hubble and her now fian- fiance is that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't yeah. even tell Hubble and her now fiance is Andrea Diaz yeah. from the Spanish team who also trains at the same yeah. camp but it was also funny because she used to date Zachary Donahue but yes. then Zachary Donahue is now or was dating Olivia Smart, who is Adrian Diaz's partner, but now it's all Zach, a little bit messy. Who's Zach dating now again? I know you guys mentioned it. Um, I Brendan think Carrie, yeah. who's like Brendan Carrie, the uh, single skater's sister. Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god, I stance just brings all the drama to Sammy. Your point why you enjoy the dance, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I guess transitionally out of talking about Hubble, what do you guys think about the two American pairs who were basically head to head going at each other for that bronze medal? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, like Chalk and Bates and Hubble and Donahue are both obviously really, really so- strong. That goes without saying. But um, um, the main thing that we noticed. Or uh, the main thing that we noticed with Chalk and Bates that kind of set them behind in the rhythm dance was that Maddie looked like she was maybe a little bit more nervous and had a little bit of a slip up when uh, one of, with one of their twizzles. Uh, I think it came apart a little bit in their rhythm dance, which um, set them was one of the factors that set them about three points behind Hubble and Donahue entering the free dance. Um, There was no room for error for them if they wanted to contend um, 
as closely as possible for that bronze medal. But I think their material, you know, this year, we talked a bit a bit about it uh, on a previous episode, but I think their material is really, really interesting. Uh, they definitely go for the kind of wow factor with their Billie Eilish short, um, short dance or rhythm dance and their uh, space <laughs> free dance. So <laughs> I think that's what they have as their strength just like their originality and their pure performance energy. And I think Hubble and Donahue kind of bring, uh, in my opinion, a much kind of stronger set of sta- skating skills and power, like power and energy to the ice. And something I've heard from people who have seen Hubble and Donahue live in comparison to Chuck and Bates is that Hubble and Donahue just give off um, a lot more speed and carriage across the ice, which kind of can set them apart in, when you see them in person more so than when you see them on TV. Uh, I don't know how accurate this is, but I've heard it a lot. And I think that is the main strength of Hubble and Donahue uh, is that they just are like war horses essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that they gave very inspired performances here. I love their Janet Jackson uh, rhythm dance. Yes. It was very strong, very on point. And I, well, I don't think that their free dance material is that creative or um, original, I guess. Um, it's just kind of lyrical and nice. I feel like they performed it really, really well here and, and kind of upped their performance energy to match the level of their skating skills. So I think they deservedly won the bronze medal, but I'm very sad for Jock and Bates as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think. Focused and I can uh, sense that there was a little bit of nervousness just by the by like when right when she starts the program too you can see like she kind of pokes her skates around in the ice and just kind of tries to establish her stance a little bit better and I sometimes like you can tell that those little those little movements that athletes do or you pick up on those little signs that show nervousness and you definitely saw that Uh, but there uh, Maddie also had like a slight stumble or trip up in the pattern dance portion of the the rhythm dance so Mm -hmm. I can definitely tell that especially after that mistake they were very very tight or I felt like they couldn't let loose and fully let that expression carry them that is one of their big strengths like I felt nervous as the audience watching them going to and finishing the rest of their twizzle sequences um, I know we talk a lot about Nathan Chen overcoming the ghost of his Olympic past but I felt like Maddie and Evan also kind of had to do that here because they've been doing so well but if you guys remember from the last Olympic cycle in 2018 in Pyeongchang, they had, they had a beautiful free dance to imagine by John Lennon, right. but they actually mm-hmm. had a fall in their spin entry in their free dance. So that definitely, I was so mm-hmm. heartbroken for them and I'm sure they were too. So that must also do a mental, mental number on you. So I'm sure they were definitely feeling that pressure to, you know, not make a mistake. And I think in ice dance, also to the naked viewers eyes who are just watching ice stance doesn't they don't look like they make a lot of mistakes or you can't really tell because yeah, it's not exactly. like it's not like in men's or ladies where it's just like oh someone misses a jump like even like like the average joe would just look at them like oh that person fell or you know mm-hmm. but like for ice stance it's so much more nuanced it's about the levels and you can't really tell but when you do actually have a slip up or fall that's even noticeable to the public eye that definitely um that definitely hurts quite a bit yeah kathy you mentioned the levels in ice stance as being very very intricate and difficult to kind of calculate and see from an ordinary ordinary person's perspective um that being said guillaume and Gabriella uh, Papadakis and Cicerone skating is Mm -hmm. unmatchable but the fact is that they actually only got a level three I believe on their Mm -hmm. lift C Um, meanwhile most of the top teams had gotten level fours on that yes yes I think overall the French still won the technical by like three points but their elements did not have this like like the Russians won the difficulty, like of the elements, I guess, in base value, but still with GOE, like the French were able to overcome them in the technical score. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. No, they have. I, I, I think Gabby and Guillaume have one of the most beautiful 
twizzle sequences like you can really see like sometimes like they twizzle so fast that you're just like oh you can't really tell but when you actually watch the slow down replays you can literally just see how crisp and how in sync their twizzles are and it's absolutely um phenomenal um but i don't know i feel like this is a little bit of a hot take but i feel like even though Gabby and Keon skates beautifully, both technically and artistically, I just feel like their music was just not as memorable, like, to me, personally. I felt like it, it didn't give me that, like, I feel bad comparing them to Tessa and Scott, but, like, I felt, I felt like that Mulan Road program that Tessa and Scott did, like, people still remember that to this day. And I'm not sure if people will remember their music, um, maybe their performance and their quality, but I'm not sure if they will remember, like, the performance itself. So I don't know what you guys think of that, but that's maybe a hot take. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like definitely I've heard the same sentiment that this is not necessarily their best material for the free dance this season, and I think I would agree. I think conceptually I really enjoyed the idea of a deconstructed tango and it seems like honestly it seems like a very technical sort of approach to creating a new style of program if you will. Oh yes we've had lots of discussions on this. I was like Sammy what is a deconstructed tango? I don't understand. I still don't understand. Maybe that's the point. Maybe I should understand after watching them so many times but I still don't understand. (laughs) um yeah I think it's just they've skated to this very classical piece called LG I don't even know if I'm saying that right um but I guess the idea behind it is there's supposed to be different sections that represent different like parts of a tango and different movements with the music um so it's like super high high (laughs) super complex super complex but to your point Kathy I think that doesn't help like that complexity doesn't help with creating a really powerful easy to understand like moment for the audience right um so I definitely agree with you I don't think that people are going to remember it in the same way as their iconic moment I think they'll people remember them as icons and having so many iconic programs but it won't be like oh this is the one that you know is what they're remembered for honestly in my opinion as well so yeah, I do think though, I or I do wonder, you know, might that have changed even with the same music if they were allowed to have a full crowd um, mm-hmm. and that sort of audience energy? Because Gabby and Guillaume, although they don't have that same type of like superstar showy performance quality as Tessa and Scott, they still bring a magical energy to audiences and maybe that would have carried them to a more I guess elevated moment with the music that Mm -hmm. would be more memorable but yeah I think that's a great yeah really quickly touching on you said the energy that they have I think the difference with Papadakis and Cicero and any of the other teams is that the tension they hold when they skate um you're kind of seeing them hold the tension there and keep the energy within the two of them instead of kind of like skating out and letting the energy Mm. disperse if that makes any sense um, mm-hmm. It kind of seems like the two of them are one person versus everyone else is two people skating together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I I like that a lot. I think they're I think they're both internally artistic people. Um, they create art, but it's almost like it's not that like big release of sharing it with the audience. And Sammy, to your point, you mentioned whether having an audience here would like make an impact, and I think that maybe it helped to their advantage that there wasn't an audience and the focus, the sole focus was not like the audience applause applause at the end, but more so rather the pure quality of their skating. I think that could have potentially helped them. But again, I felt like because they were like the one, one of the one pair to watch uh, for if you were to watch anyone in Ice Dance, I think they would still have brought a crowd to their feet. Yeah, that being said, we talked about gold medalist finishers and bronze medalist finishers. What do you guys think of um, Sinitsina and Katislavov's performance here? Yeah, I I can comment on it first. I think 
that their free dance here was substantially better than their free dance in the team event. And I think the scores agreed with that statement. Um, I'm not sure that I would have put them over Hubble and Donahue in the free dance. And honestly, Hubble and Donahue and Chalk and Bates were both very close together in the free dance. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I spoke a bit about how their Vicky and Nikki's um, sort of music cut transition to the folky type music was sort of weird uh, in our team mm-hmm. event recap. And although I think they performed that choreographic folky sequence better here, it was a little bit more clean, whereas I thought it was really messy in the team event. It was still kind of weird. And just I just don't see with them as much um, full body movement perhaps and much like as much um, depth to their skating as I do with some other teams. And maybe that's not because of them. Maybe that's because of the material they've been giving and given and their choreography, because I do think they're talented skaters and clearly have worked very hard, but yeah, it just an example of that was in that, sort of folky choreographic step sequence I'm not sure exactly what it's called technically but yeah I just felt like they were very upright sort of moving their arms side to side and up and down and dancing which fit with the music but I feel like the ice dance is moving to being really rewarded people are really being rewarded for having a lot of like motions that are sweeping and going up and down and all around you know Um, And I don't see that necessarily from them as much. But that being said, I'm definitely not an ice dance expert. So maybe they are truly better um, than Hubble and Donahue by uh, a landslide. But I I don't think so. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's my bias showing. Yeah. (laughs) What about you guys? Yeah. I honestly think that I know you speak about the difference between them and Hubble and Donahue. I think honestly the difference should not be that high. I know if you look at the scoring, the overall point difference between the Mm. two teams is a two point difference. And I know that does not seem like a lot, but I stand scoring is very tight. If you make a small mistake, it's very hard to make that up rather in singles or individual ladies or men's. It's like, oh, you can make back a huge amount of you know, points in the free skate if you mess up something in the short because you have something like a quad that's already like base value, like 12 points or whatnot, and you add on like a plus three or four GO80. Right. That's a lot of points. But in I stance, you don't really get that chance. So yeah. two points is actually quite a lot. I honestly thought they would be like sure. much, much closer. And Hubble I- and Donahue and Vicky and Nikki side by side. I just feel like Hubble and Donahue's ice coverage was just much better and they just skated True. bigger. Um, and they felt like honestly much more of an Olympic moment for me than Vicky and Nikki did. And another pair that we saw in the team short was Charlene and Marco from Italy. And I actually really loved their long program. So we saw their short twice um, I think it was to Michael, Jask- Ma- Michael Jackson music, which was pretty good, but I think their free skate really blew it out of the water for me. Um, I know in the second half of their long, they skated to The Little Sparrow, which I think Sam oh, also oh, really oh, enjoys yeah. that song. Yes, yes, that is my music <laughs> or my former music, I guess. And I'm yeah. very attached to it. Yeah, yeah, but when I heard it and then I saw how like emotional they were on the ice, they were very good at expressing like facial expressions and just mm-hmm. projecting um, the emotions that they're feeling through their skating. I just really, really was happy for them. And I thought they really enjoyed their performance and they skated with a lot more maturity I saw than some of the other skaters or some of the younger teams. Mm-hmm. I think their free skate was definitely better than their rhythm dance, but I felt like still they were kind of like one of those pairs that did quite well technically, but they were just kind of, they weren't as innovative, I felt like, in comparison to some of the other pairs. And you can see that it, it they do the lyrical very well and execute it well, but it's not exactly like, in my opinion, like an Olympic moment or anything super exciting. Yeah, definitely. I I think that they definitely are somewhat underrated by the skating community, but they're not underrated in their scores. I think mm-hmm. they generally get the scores that I would say they deserve. They deserve, yeah. Because of their quality. Um, 
and they just have been around for so long and are so mature, as you guys mentioned. Let's talk a little bit about Stepanova and Bukin. I know one thing I want to mention is that uh, Ivan Bukin in this team recently became a father and is still competing. So I saw that Megan Duhamel uh, tweeted like a congratulatory <laughs> message to him <laughs> for competing um, as a as a new father. So that's what I mean. I mean, I guess he, he's been around for a while. I'm not so sure about her, but oh, yeah, wait, <laughs> he <was> very young. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, <laughs> don't quote me on this, but didn't Scott Moyer also just become a dad too? Okay, I think, I think so. that's right. Yeah. That's crazy to me. I'm just like the last time I remembered in like you weren't even engaged and now you're a father. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Wow. wow. That is crazy. Well, it makes Stefanova and Buchan one of the only I stands pairs that are not actually dating. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I would say I totally agree with your comment, uh, Sammy. They kind of did this contemporary Romeo and Juliet in the sh- in the free dance which i'm mm. not the biggest fan of because Thank when you. i think about romeo and juliet there's so many good classical examples of that in figure mm. skating that has a traditional long history of just you know i i i, lo- I love that they're being innovative but it was just not executed well and i think the program kind of fell flat a little bit and they mm-hmm. it was also a little bit sloppy um and in terms of their rhythm dance as well i think that i don't know if it's just me but it looked like stepanova who's gorgeous by the way yeah was an wearing, absolute model yeah no she's like absolute model status so is vicky from yeah uh, vicky and I, i'm just like emma and i were talking about this i was like why do all the russian ice dance girls look like victoria's secret models it's no, exactly is actually crazy but Anyways, like, she looked like she was wearing, like, a clubbing bodycon dress under, like, 90s workout True. outfit. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I was like, who designed for, this? Um, for her sh- rhythm dance, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was like, who designed this? I was like, that's a near close to Vera Wang doing the Cheeto costume for Nathan. And I'm Honestly, like, Honestly, yeah. <laughs> why? It was just, oh, they could they could have done so much better. The thing is, though, I really liked their rhythm dance. I think it was to music by Backstreet Boys, and I mm, thought yes. it was super fun and exciting. And then I was, was like, fun. why are you wearing that off outfit? Yeah. Yeah. Piper and Paul. Um, they were definitely someone who I felt like, or a team that came into the Olympics with people having sort of high expectations, perhaps metal expectations for them. Mm-hmm. And that definitely did not pan out. Uh, what did you guys think of their performances? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely think it was very upsetting for them and also I'm sure for their team and their fans. Um, I think overall in general, they just haven't had that strong of a showing at the Olympics. I know in their team event, Rhythm Dance, they didn't score well. And then here in the long program, in the individual, I believe Piper didn't get to stand up on her straight lift or like her straight leg lift Um, it was right on the music too and Mm. I think they have such high quality skating skills that it was very upsetting to see them not be able to skate to their expectations Um, at the same time I don't think the material for their free dance was super creative or super olympic moment type material but I do enjoy their rhythm dance Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. their packaging almost reminded me a little bit of like uh Hubble and Donahue's packaging for the free dance yeah. where like even the colors they wore were That's like kind true. of the colors are similar. similar it's like it's like the lyrical light pink blue vibes um so yeah no I, I guess I, with that being said we can transition to a bit of a happier moment with smart and Diaz my personal favorite um, free dance of the season and I think you guys maybe agree a bit Mm -hmm. um yeah they they skated um to Mask of Zorro for their free dance and I just feel like their costuming was amazing like I never thought I would enjoy a green dress so much but it's Mm -hmm. like beautiful green is the color of the year exactly yeah (laughs) it's true (laughs) I think that honestly the Olympics for Smart and Diaz was not so much here as it was in actually qualifying. Maybe for more sure. so for any other team because they had to beat out the other Spanish dance team um, by the combination of points at three events this season. 
to be able to earn that one spot to the Olympics for Spain. And so I think it really speaks to their independent drive and excitement to not just be the best in Spain, but to be up there in the top group in the world that they came out and really were on point this entire competition. They did a wonderful, super sharp, um, detail-oriented free dance, but also one that was very um, entertaining for the crowd. Uh, Sort of related to your earlier point, Kathy, I think this is the type of material that really does create a memorable Olympic moment. And, Mm -hmm. you know, if they were contenders for the Olympic gold medal and that they won that, which obviously is outside Mm -hmm. the realm of possibility, but I think people would remember this program for a very long time. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I was, I, after watching the free dance last night, I was like, I feel like the only free dance that I would go back and willingly watch would be Smart and Diaz. Cause I feel like they just created something so unique and different yes. looking in terms of the shapes they created how they moved their arms you know timing the twizzle sequence right on the crescendo mm. of that music I so confidently just, too exactly and I think tw- a lot of people go into twizzles very cautiously because it is one of the I would say mo- one of the most the difficult quad of ice dance. Yeah, exactly the quad of ice dancing it's like it's the moment that when you're watching ice dance I'm on the edge of my seat because it's the one that's most likely like people will make mistakes on mm-hmm. but I think what beats anything else is just a twiddle sequence like beautifully building and beautifully timed with the music and also um, their ending was like <laughs> really really unique too I was like whoa I didn't yeah. expect that coming I was like like the sound of sword slashing and he does this little like <laughs> this sword slashing thing but it looked good like if exactly. I were to explain this to someone without them watching they would be like that sounds dumb as fuck <laughs> right, but right they do it really well so I would say um it was yeah no it was definitely a really really good showing for them and you can see that uh, I feel like smart Olivia Smart is someone who's very level-headed, definitely a fierce competitor. Um, you can see her bring that energy and to see her kind of like smile for the first time and see that release after the free dance was really nice to see. And they know that they hit their uh, season's best, which they did. So that was, that was great to see. Yeah, definitely. I also echo everything you guys said. Loved their performance here. Um, I thought they did a great job. One thing that I noticed that the Montreal Ice Dance teams do a lot in their free dance is they kind of stop in the middle and have this choreographic sequence, which they kind of do steps or they dance. I'm not sure how exactly if that's like something that's kind of characteristic of uh, the Montreal dance team's choreography, but I think a lot of the teams do have that moment where they dance to the very exciting music. Mm. And that those are moments that really make a program for me, I think, because it's just very entertaining to watch. Um, so that being said, I also wanted to talk about the team from Great Britain. I'm assuming that Fear and Gibson are on the younger side of Ice Dance teams at this Olympics just because mm-hmm. they're younger in age. Um, and you can kind of tell that with their skating. I think yeah. some of their elements weren't super in sync, but I thought they were a very entertaining pair to watch. Um, they did a KISS short program and a Lion King program for their long. And I know Lewis does a couple like aerials in the short and in the long. Right. And I just thought he was having a really, really fun time um, competing and being out there and just being at the Olympics that I just really enjoyed the performance. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that they'll definitely be ones that are sticking around uh, for the next Olympic cycle, as far as I know. Um, so it'll be interesting to watch them sort of build and improve as many of the dance teams we talked about today so far probably will not be sticking around Mm -hmm. uh not that we know for sure but uh some of them have been around for a long time and we're kind of sticking it out for this olympics so they really have an opportunity in the next few years to mature and grow in their skating clean up those little details and uh become you know sort of grow into their full potential so I'm really excited to see that happen Ooh, Um, wait wait this is more of a random aside but do you guys think like speaking of like retirement and sticking around do you guys mm. think Gabby and Guillaume are gonna continue skating or do you think like the Olympic gold was kind of their last hurrah 
I don't know because I feel like I haven't read anything that says they're for sure going to be done after this year. However, I, I think if they stay in the sport, it would only be for kind of their own sake. Like say they have more program ideas or like new styles they want to try to perfect. I feel like that would be more of the reason rather than like accumulating more titles. But I think honestly, you know, maybe they could win the next Olympic gold medal in ice dance as well if they stuck around. <laughs> you guys That's actually true. They're still pretty young um, in terms of ice dance team ages. Okay. And I think, yeah, Sammy, you're right. I read something that said uh, Gabby was saying they were just going to do this year and then see what happens after. So okay. nothing is for sure yet. Okay. Keeping Gosh. it exciting. And <laughs> yeah, I know. For us. You never know what to expect. But yeah, no, back to talking about like more underrated skaters. Mm. Um, the other US team that I feel like just got like, um, I feel like they got like left in the shadows because the talk was all about Chapin Bates and Hummel and Donahue fighting for that bronze medal. But the other US team that was sent to the mm-hmm. Olympics was Hawaiak and Baker. I feel like I never know how to say her name properly, but hopefully I am saying it correctly. I think um, that's right. or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but right. Caitlin, let's call her Caitlin. Yeah. Um, I think I think they're one of those pairs I feel like has a lot of just pure passion and joy for ice dance and skating that you can just see it um show shown off on the ice they may not be technically the strongest but they definitely do bring that like draw de vive like vibe that cowrie cowrie from team japan brings to the Mm. ladies uh and you can see that after caitlin finishes her program uh she comes off and she just gives marie france this huge hug and she was like that was so much fun and i was like yeah wow, I just loved seeing someone be out there. Like, it didn't even seem like she was nervous at all. It was more like right. she just wanted to have fun and show the judges what they could do. And they pulled off, you know, two two great programs. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I just, I really enjoyed um, their free dance costumes. Now, I guess more so hers than his, but oh, yeah. I just thought that, <laughs> It was really beautiful, and this is not. I mean, it goes longer. Skating is wonderful. Um, I think John Luke is a really, really talented skater, um, actually, and uh, it's harder for them, I think, because they like because John Luke isn't as tall. I think it's harder mm-hmm. for them to take up as much space on the ice, mm-hmm. um, just in terms of how they look. But they really are powerful skaters. And they do show beautiful lines. So I definitely think that this was like a success for them. And and hopefully Mm -hmm. they continue in the future for USA stance. But I'm not sure if they will. Yeah. 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 And Sammy, to your point, and we were having a conversation about this earlier in her chat. But I think just the fact that I love just how Caitlin looks in terms of her Mm. build, that she looks like a healthy adult women female athlete, which is so great to see. And I know, of course, like there are athletes from all builds and frames, like mm. naturally, but I feel like skating is one of those sports where they really, really stress like, oh, like you have to be thin, which is not true. And it's great that, mm. you know, Caitlin is kind of showing like a very, like, like showing that like a healthy adult woman can do all these amazing, to- uh, amazing things too. Right. So I think that was, that was really, really awesome. And I know that just technically speaking, having John Luke being like a little bit shorter than the average male ice dancer that creates challenges, but they're able to show off that people with those differences can overcome that. Um, so I think that was great overall for them. Mm. I would, just, I would just say John Luke needs to ditch his costumes cause they look so <laughs> bad. I'm just like, why man? Like Caitlin looks like a goddess. Honestly, and he's I like, think it wasn't right? that bad. I think it was like, like he was wearing, it like, matched. I think it matched her. It did her match. Dress. It did match. He looked like he was wearing a plastic bag. For, like, a <laughs> hey, okay, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, yeah. But anyway, okay. More underrated skaters I want to talk about. Yeah. Wang and Liu from China. I feel like after the team event, I have become a new fan. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Again, they are coached. I was like, 
damn, even the Chinese are coached yeah. by Marie France now. Exactly. I'm just like, they have the biggest monopoly after freaking Jeff Bezos' monopoly in Amazon <laughs> in the retail industry. Like, I think <laughs> you're not wrong. That's yeah. pretty true. I, I just think that, like, uh, they're choreography especially in the free dance is so lovely it's very unique i love the part where he like kind of sends her underneath his legs and then like kind of she like flips over like it's really hard to describe this without you seeing i know what you're talking about yeah 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 but it's just so and i think that it like goes back to the fact that the montreal dance camp is very very good at program packaging and creating unique choreography like in a way that like i'm in shocked that they have so many people that they all coach yeah but for some like for some reason they're able to pull off like a different vibe, vibe or right. image for every single pair and i'm like honestly like props to them that's probably why they have the monopoly but i just think that um they're skating so beautiful and i think honestly i think the guy is really really hot but he just needs <laughs> to ditch the mullet haircut. Yeah. It's so bad. I'm just like, I was like stalking their Instagram and I was like, he looked so great before. Who in their right mind told him that he should grow out his hair and style it like that for the Olympics? And I'm just like, no, like, why would you ever do that? But that's just my personal opinion. Also, jumping back to the point you made before about Marie Francis Camp's choreography, this is not like, this is quickly becoming a Montreal dance school fan uh, fan uh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I just want to say, I think what they do really well is listening to the music of each team. Mm. I think that's like a big characteristic of what makes their choreography so special. It's like the moves that the skaters are doing kind of relate to the music that they're listening to. So it's kind of not just the skaters skating their own thing and the music's playing in the background. They're really listening to the music and pairing the moves with the music, which you think most people should do, but I actually believe that it's quite hard to execute. Yeah, yeah. Telling a story on the ice is way harder than you think it is. And to, especially in ice dance, because especially in the rhythm dance, there's a lot of actually preset requirements that, maybe you don't see as often in like the individual event where you actually have to do the same set of steps as every other pair, at least for the rhythm dance. So it's kind of like, how creative can you get with the confines of what you have to work with? And I feel like they do that very well. All right. Um, So that is enough rambling about ice dance and talking and fangirling about the Montreal dance camp. Um, What are your guys' top pick of this event? I, okay, so I'll preface this by saying that I love the French so much, so much. So, of course, that is like my uh, uh, actual, you know, (laughs) my celebratory moment of the week but or not moment of the week moment of the event but um I think I have two other ones um that I'll choose one is that this was Evan Bates fourth Olympics and he got fourth it's a little bit sad oh no (laughs) but that's just so impressive for Olympics I can't even imagine putting your body through that and being on top in that way for so long and then another would be just Madison Hubble's moment um I think her personality is very different from mine and she's very outspoken and um (laughs) yeah all these things but I really do feel like she's super passionate and a hard worker and I kind of thought she was like crying towards the end of their free dance in the program but not the type of like fake crying it was more just like emoting and really trying to live out their performance for all it was knowing that this is their last season so Yeah, I think that was my moment. I mean, it was really kind of spoke to the spirit of the Olympics, I thought. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Kathy, you want to go next? Oh, man. I feel like usually I'm the one that goes last because I know know what to pick. (laughs) But I actually do think I have a pick. I think my pick of this event is Smart and Diaz's free dance. I think it's so just unique. 
it just left me wanting to watch it again. And mm-hmm. I felt like that is that was really the it moment for me. And I think seeing kind of Olivia especially break that character of just that release after her free dance because she is such like a she almost like also gives me like feisty blonde energy <laughs> very true yeah um similar to Hubble um mm-hmm. but I I just I'm so happy for her that even though like they probably knew that they weren't going to podium I think they were definitely aiming for season's best and they got their yeah. season's best so mm-hmm. um I'm just so happy for them and I hope that we continue to see them in the coming years on the field because I think they bring something that's so unique that honestly I feel like this sports this this, this event needs because yes. I feel like in the past couple of years more and more of it has come to just you know lyrical and lyrical and more lyrical mm-hmm. and I think uh innovation is definitely what we need to keep kind of the viewership for I stands up to because we know that it's so not as popular to the general public audience mm-hmm. in comparison to like the ladies or the men's individual events right yeah Okay, Emma, can't wait any longer. Okay. Come on. I would say I also have two, but one is the one that you just mentioned, Kathy. So keep that one short. I saved I it for you guys. <laughs> my, my other favorite skate of the event was Fear and Gibson's rhythm dance to the Kiss music. Mm. I think because it was so unexpected. I don't really follow Ice Dance that much, so I didn't know of this team previously, but I just tuned in to the rhythm dance the other day and I was so pleasantly surprised by their performance and I really enjoyed it so I think that they were my favorite and I'm excited to see them in future seasons oh I feel like you guys all picked two you guys cheated you're supposed to pick one Um, (laughs) it makes me want to pick a second one um oh okay but can I pick a second one yeah of course (laughs) okay okay fine because I was like really close to picking this other one but I think Hubble and Donahue's uh beginning of their rhythm dance to Mm. Nasty by Janet Jackson so so crisp and so good and that music slaps so hard like I so I was like I was practicing at my rink uh, earlier this week and then there's like nobody on that session. So I just put on music and I was putting on that Janet Jackson song and literally mm-hmm. like another like choreographer from Canada who was working with like an ice dancer was just like jamming out to it as well. Oh my God. Um, and it like, it was a moment in the rink where everyone was just like, yes, this music slaps. And I was like, this is, this is definitely, yeah, no, I, I, I love their, I love their beginning. Um, to their rhythm dance so yeah that was another moment for me but well, all, all right, right. I- that is a wrap for today's episode of what happened at on the in the element figure skating show thank you so much for tuning in this week leave us a comment down below on your opinions and thoughts because if you're a figure skating fan you are definitely opinionated be sure to subscribe we're available on youtube if you want to get some snazzy visuals and spotify if you want to just listen to our crackly voices thank you again until next time Stay edgy.